just a couple days ago, Mudrave made a post on their socials, saying, In November 2020, we publicly launched Mudrave Beta. In November 2022, we launched a creator monetization program. What do you think we might do in November 2024? And this, of course, intrigued many of us. What is Mudrave planning to do this time? What are they gonna announce? It has to be something massive, otherwise they wouldn't make a post about it like this. Luckily for us, it only took a couple days before Modrinth announced it. Modrinth servers. In Modrinth's own words, a fresh take on what a server host can be. In other words, you can now host a Minecraft server on Modrinth. Now my first reaction when I saw this was, wow, that's interesting. And a little unexpected. ModRimp is a Minecraft content platform, meaning it is a distributor of mods, plugins, shader packs, texture packs, and the list goes on. Minecraft server hosting is a whole different expertise. And no matter how many guesses I would have made, I would have never expected ModRimp to get into server hosting. But let's take a look at it. So ModRimp servers, powered by Pyro. This is what the front page looks like. It is not a separate website. It is just a new tab on modrimp.com. So hosting a server at modrimp comes with all the stuff you would expect a Minecraft server host to have. Like a custom URL, the ability to make backups, a console, SFTP access, some networking settings and more. And when you scroll down far enough, you will get to the plans. Now they have three plans for you laid out, but you can also just make your own. But here there are two important things to point out. First of all, they are currently only offering servers in the USA, in New York and Los Angeles. So if you're not located in the USA, then getting a server at Modrinth might not be the best call, as your ping is most likely gonna take a hit. But then, the pricing. A small server, which is their cheapest laid out plan, costs $12 per month. And for that $12, you get 4 gigabytes of RAM. This is not cheap. It is definitely not the most expensive. Don't get me wrong, there are many hosting providers out there that charge way more per gigabyte. But there are also a lot of hosting providers out there that charge way less per gigabyte. Of course, something else we're also interested in is the CPU. What type of CPU are these servers running? On. But this is unfortunately where ModRimp is a little vague. There are quite a lot of Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 CPUs. It's nice that it's a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9, but a little more information would have been nice, especially for the people who care a lot about it. Now, just to give you a comparison, my channel partner Alienhost also offers Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 CPUs, but there you only pay one and a half euros per gigabyte, meaning you can get a four gigabyte server at six euros. And I would be a bad partner if I wouldn't say you can save an additional 20% off of your first month by using code Casasora, which of course also helps me out along the way. But okay, back to Modrimp. They are not the cheapest, not the most expensive. You can also build your own plan though. And when we do that, you might notice something else. At this point in time, Modrimp only supports vanilla Minecraft or a server software that can load mods like Fabric, Forge, Quilt, and Neoforge. At this point in time, Modrimp has no support for server softwares that can load plugins like Spigot, Paper, and Burper. Now, I do want to make clear that in the blog post they made announcing ModRimp servers, they are clear they will be adding support for plugin loaders in the future, just like global availability instead of just in the USA. But again, those are future promises and something that is not here right now. Now, you can tweak your server from 2 all the way to 16 gigabytes of RAM, but that also means for a 16 gigabyte server, you pay almost $50 per month. Now, of course, I have to test this out. So I bought the cheapest server on Modrim. And here it is, Casa Sora's server. So what do we got? Well, here in the overview, we can see the usage of all the server resources, and we also get a nice console so that we can send commands and see what's going on on the server. Then when we go to content, you can actually add content. This means you will be sent to the ModRimp content page and over here you can simply install mods onto your server. It is really cool and it works really well and really nice. It's just the ModRimp interface you're used to already but now you can just install something straight onto your server. So when I click on install here, bam, that's it. It's just that easy. But while content installation is made very easy and it all looks very clean, there are also some limitations. Most notably, you can only download content from ModRimp. And of course you can. This is ModRimp 
servers. But the thing is, most hosting providers already have a mod or plugin installer like this, where you can just install a mod or a plugin with a single click. The difference is though that on other hosting providers, you cannot just download stuff from ModRim, but also from CurseForge and Feed the Beast and Spigot. There is just more compatibility. This is ModRim servers, so they're not going to add platforms that are not ModRim. And sure, you can still upload mods, but the installer is still more limiting and you you can upload mods on other hosting providers as well. Now next we got backups, which is pretty handy. And then we have the options. This is the place where you can change your custom URL, server name, server icon. You can also change your platform or even import a mod pack. So that's pretty cool. You can change the Java version if you want. You can also connect a domain. I just want to make clear here that you can always connect your own domain to your Minecraft server. What ModRimp is doing here though is providing you with a DNS record generator. So you can put in your own domain here, the domain you want people to use to join your server and then ModRimp will generate DNS records for you that you then have to add to your domain so that it actually works. This can always be done though. They just easily provide you with the information you need. And then we got properties which is just the properties file of Minecraft. We got preferences which are some options you can enable or disable and then there is billing and general information. Okay so what are my thoughts? I am very intrigued but also a little bit confused. The main thing I'm wondering is who is ModRimp? ModRimp trying to target here because ModRimp servers is not the cheapest. It is also not the most customizable and it's also not the most compatible. What are they trying to do here? Who are they trying to target and what are they trying to achieve? Well, when it comes to achieving, I think it's pretty clear. They want to become more sustainable and that is a good thing. I've made multiple videos about ModRimp and their sustainability issues in the past and with the new ads on ModRimp, they were able to become sustainable again, which is incredible. But of course, ads can only get you so far and this server hosting of them can really help them to stay sustainable in the future, even if the traffic to their website grows. But again, who are they targeting? Who are they wanting to buy a ModRimp server? And first I was a little confused by this, but I think I get it. I think ModRimp servers is targeting kind of the same audience that also buys Minecraft Realms. Because Minecraft Realms is nice, simple, and easy. If you are a casual Minecraft player and you want to play multiplayer with a couple friends and you don't really care about getting the cheapest server or having the most compatibility or customization you just want to play multiplayer, then Minecraft Realms could be very intriguing to you. As it is super simple, you can purchase it in-game, meaning you don't even have to leave Minecraft to get one, and it just works. And I think ModRimp here is trying to target the same thing. If you are a diehard ModRimp user, meaning you download all of your content from ModRimp solely, you use the ModRimp launcher, maybe you're even uploading content to ModRimp and you're earning creator revenue from that. So you're fully involved into the ModRimp ecosystem, essentially. And then what you want is just play a mod pack with your friends. You don't care about setting up a server or getting the best price. You just want something that works. Just you being able to play a mod pack, period. Then why would you even leave ModRimp.com if you can all do it in-house? And I think that is the group of people that's going to be interested in these servers. Now me, personally, I'm just really interested and really curious to see how this project is going to evolve in the future. I want to make one thing clear. I absolutely love ModRimp. ModRimp, if you're seeing this, I love your platform. I absolutely do. But in the current state of ModRimp servers, there's no way I could recommend it to my audience. 90% of my content is based around plugins, which it simply doesn't support yet. Also, the majority of my viewers is also not located in the USA. And as for price, it's somewhere in the middle. There are cheaper options. There are also more expensive ones. So I think it all mostly depends on who you are and what you're looking for. At the same time, though, I really, really hope that ModRimp doesn't lose sight on what they are. A Minecraft content distribution website. Like ModRimp is the first real competitor to CurseForge. CurseForge has essentially been a monopoly in the Minecraft content and resource distribution community. There was never a real competitor. But since ModRimp has started to show its face, now there is. And that is super exciting. When I need a resource, I will go to ModRimp right away. But with them reaching out to server hosting, which is definitely gonna have a higher financial outcome compared to showing a single ad on the download page, I just hope they don't lose sight of the content platform. I hope in the future they will keep making big steps to 
improving their platform, maybe they can support even more types of content in the future, for example, like maps or resources for Minecraft better condition. That would be quite awesome to see. Anyhow, time will tell. And that's gonna be it for today. Do make sure to subscribe to my channel, join my Discord. Thank you so much, channel members. And then I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>